How you doing, guys? Yeah, no, I've been I've been escaping you guys for a couple of weeks. Well, we finally you know, snagged a little, little it. vacation, and we're back. <laughs> we're ready to go. Twenty twenty two. Let's tear it up. Listen, uh, speaking of twenty twenty two, obviously first quarter fights uh, ha have been announced. Uh, wh wh what's the fight that you're looking forward to the most? I mean, I know they're all yours, but <laughs> <laughs> so many. Um, you know, on both sides of the pond. I mean. Uh, Danny Jacobs, you know, coming over to the UK to fight John Ryder is, is such a intriguing fight because, you know, Danny, I see him in the gym. He looks like he's really got a chip on his shoulder right now, the bit between his teeth to come over. You know, he's had to come over to the UK into John Ryder's backyard to make a statement, really, after that Rosado fight. And I think it's going to be a really dangerous fight for John Ryder. Lawrence Acoli, of course, defending. Who can't get excited about Estrada against Chocolatito 3? It's like a fight of the year before it's even started. You know, you just know exactly what you're going to get for that fight. Yes. Lee Wood against Michael Conlon is a fight yes. I'm really looking forward that's to as well. You know, yeah. um, that's a great fight. And again, Josh Warrington, you know, getting a, a rematch with Kiko Martinez to become a two-time world champion. So, you know, lots announced. And of course, our boy Michael McKinson up against it against Virgil Ortiz as well. It's going to be an interesting encounter. And of course, moving towards April where, you know, you're going to probably see AJ Usyk, um, you're going to see Connor Ben, you're going to see Callum Smith, and you're probably going to see Taylor Serrano as well with our, with our good buddy Jake Paul. All right, so if if she felt like she wasn't um, offered the right amount of money, you know, recently, maybe a year ago, why is that money there now? Did she increase her value with her fights? Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, I mean, look, Jake Paul's done a brilliant job for her. You know, he's he's massively increased Amanda Serrano's value. Um, and she deserves this, you know. The price that was offered two or three years ago is not the price anymore. You know, as they say, <laughs> yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and Jake Paul's a massive reason for that. Amanda's done her bit. She's had some great performances. She's boxed on big platforms. And, you know, she's increased her value. And Jake's done a great job as well. So both girls getting handsomely paid for that fight. And they deserve it because it doesn't get any bigger. You know, in female yeah. boxing, it doesn't get any bigger than this fight. And we, in a way, I want to stop saying, you know, this is the biggest fight in female boxing. This is one of the biggest fights in boxing. Yes. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hopefully get this tied up and run a promotion with Jake Paul to see yeah. how he can do things in our seat as well. And I think he's going to do a good job at it. Speaking of uh, big fights, uh, another huge fight that we're all waiting for is Usyk. Joshua, you mentioned it a few minutes ago, but... How close are we to having a date, a venue? I think we're looking at sort of April for that fight. UK is the front, the front runner. You know, could be back at Spurs, could be at Wembley. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about step asides and other purse bids and stuff like that. But we're pretty focused on that fight. Spoke to Alex Prasuk uh, last week and we're going through options for the venue for that fight. But I think April is realistic. And I do think UK is the front runner for the rematch. There's something that wasn't uh, too clear for me. If White Fury goes to purse bid, will it still have to be 80-20 or can you guys negotiate a different split? Well, if it goes to purse bid, it'll be at the split of whatever the WBC orders. At the moment, mm. that's 80-20. We, we object to that and we appeal to that. So mm. there's a process, you know, there's, there's many ways that that appeal can go through either the WBC or an arbitration, but we certainly appeal that. We don't think it's, it's a fair split. Those purse bids have been delayed for a week now. And, you know, we, we will hopefully get the, the hearing of that appeal. And we just we just want everything fair for Dillian White. You know, ultimately, he wants his shot. But, you know, in terms of his value in the fight and how long he's had to wait, we don't feel like 80-20 is fair, especially when the maximum split for an interim champion is 55-45. So, right. you know, hopefully we can get, get a split that's fair. Ultimately, whatever the split is, the split is. And we should be very aggressive in the bids if it goes to bids for that fight. Um, and, and, you know, and, and really we're, we're, we're close to that happening then. What do you guys think is fair? Meaning maybe maybe Tyson doesn't want 55-45. So what do you think is the lowest and would still be fair? Yeah, Tyson would want 80-20, you know. But I think 80-20 is like a standard situation for someone that doesn't carry much value. Mm -hmm. And Dillian White is a guy that has boxed on pay-per-view several times, you know, half a dozen times. He's filled up the O2. But more importantly, he's had to wait his time, you know. And, and I feel that when you're talking about 55, 45 as a top end, it needs to be towards that number. 
because of his commercial value and because of how long he's waited. So it's not a guy that's just strolled in, had one win and become mandatory and doesn't really have a lot of value. This is a guy who has big commercial value, that's boxed the very best, that's had to wait for a long, long time. So we, we feel like it's significantly more than 80-20. Now, uh, moving back over to AJ, and listen, uh, we talked about this last week, about him adding a trainer to the, uh, you know, to the team. Can you reveal to us who's the new guy that AJ's working with? No, AJ will do that himself in due course when camp starts, you know, and, and you know, there's been training in the US, there's been training in the UK. Um, you know, he's he's got a good idea in his mind now what his team will look like for that training camp. And, you know, he's had to work hard at that. He's had to think carefully because this is a fight where he can't afford to get anything wrong. You know, a lot of people have said to me, is it a bit risky getting him with a new trainer, you know, 14 weeks out, whatever it is. And the answer to that is it's more risky to go in feeling like you're not got the right people around you or you're not prepared enough for the fight. So I think he's buoyant, he's excited. He feels like he's done the research, he's done the work. And, you know, probably in the next three or four weeks, it'll be time to enter camp. And I'm sure he'll make an announcement about who's on the team. Um, and it's a camp that's going to be very important for his career. And, and I know one that he's very excited about. Well, we can't wait for that one. Here's another fight that I can't wait for. Well, I want to know if it's in the works. And we're talking about the dream, man. Devin Haney, is the Cambosas fights in the works? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, I spoke to Lou DeBella yesterday, I think. You know, obviously he's doing his work in Australia. So we, we've had an offer as well from the Middle East for Haney against Cambosas, or, or certainly one that we're, we're edging towards receiving a, a firm offer for. Um, for me, it's the only fight for the division. I know top rank are talking about Lomachenko against Cambosas, but you know, we need to wrap up this undisputed situation. We need to know who is the real champion. Right. It's a natural fight. Haney against Cambosas is a brilliant fight. We can do it Sunday afternoon in Australia, which is prime time US. You know, we can do it in, in uh, the United Arab Emirates. We can do it in America. But Devin Haney's ready to go for that fight. You know, he won't price himself out. He realises George Cambosis is the king of the division right now. You know, he's the one with, with most of the belts. He's the one that's put in a great performance last time out and the, the big win. And yeah. Devin's ready to do whatever he's got to do to become undisputed. And hopefully myself and Lou DeBella and Peter Khan and... and ferocious promotions can can get that fight over the line because it's really one that, that I feel is the natural fight for the division. Do you think that, look, for a while, you know, people were throwing shots at Devin, especially guys like Leonard Ellaby saying that, you know, he is not bringing exciting fights or he doesn't have the, the following that Tank Davis has. But Devin seems to be the one that keeps proving himself fighting guys and looking spectacular every time. So <laughs> it seems that he's the guy to beat. Is he finally going to get in the respect, do you think, in the industry that he deserves? Well, I said, you know, he had the best resume of any lightweight in, in 2022, uh, 2021. You know, he beat Hain, he beat Linares, he beat Diaz. You know, they're two really solid wins. And for a long time, we were struggling to, to get those names for Devin Haney. We have to pay up for those names because we know everybody rates Devin Haney and they know how difficult he is to beat. So, you know, right now you have to give Cambosis a massive amount of credit and respect. You know, it was a massive underdog victory. It was the, the it was the victory of the year. But Devin's been really consistent. And that's one thing you're always going to get from Devin Haney is consistency in the gym and in the ring. And, you know, people talk about, oh, Devin Haney doesn't do this. Devin Haney doesn't do that. Trust me, the numbers for Devin Haney on the zone are fantastic. So, you know, I think he's in a great position. Uh, he deserves this fight. He's, he's taking care of his business solidly and quietly. And, you know, for me, he's the number one lightweight in the world. It's great to know that uh, Devin Haney is doing good uh, as far as numbers on DAZN because a fighter who's willing to fight anybody deserves those numbers. Now, you kind of slipped in earlier. You said ferocious promotions, and, I, and I'm assuming uh, that came after this big fight. Uh, so is that what happens? George Cambosis goes out and starts his own promotional company after a big win like that against Teofimo? No, I think, you know, a lot of these fighters have their promotional companies that they run their, their business out of. Of course, Devin Haney, you know, DHB Promotions, um, George Cambosis, Ferocious Cam, uh, Promotions. You know, he's also with Lou DeBella, obviously Devin's with us. Um, I sometimes laugh about these, these fighter promotional companies because I think it's a good thing to do. You know, I think you need to be represented. But at the same time, I always joke with them. Sometimes with Bill Haney, you know, if the show loses money, 
I always go to those co-promoters and say, have you got your 50% of the losses, please? <laughs> and it goes, it goes a bit quiet, you know? So yeah. I think that, it's, listen, it's a good look sometimes for these young fighters because it makes them feel like, you know, they've got, they've got a say in the promotion and they have as well. You know, ultimately I keep saying, we work for the fighters, you know, they're our bosses. So it doesn't bother me that, that a fighter wants to have their promotional company represented. You now, if it's Devin Haney Promotions, if it's Ferocious Promotions, if it's Canelo Promotions, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's all about, of course, we, we also understand that 99% of the legwork comes from, from us. But, you know, it's, it's part of their business and part of their brand. And as, and as yeah. time goes by, it enables them to have potential for further business when they retire. You know, right. signing fighters, doing shows themselves, maybe getting some kind of network deal if they become big enough. So Spe I don't mind the play. Speaking of Canelo, you just mentioned him. Uh, we are waiting to see what he's going to do next. I know we don't know if it's going to be on Fox, on pay-per-view, on Showtime, or on the Zone. But we're hoping that he's back on the Zone. What what steps are you making to bring Canelo back and work with him on the next fight? So I spoke to Eddie Reynoso a couple of times over the last week or so. Um, I saw his tweet, which is basically saying, look, we haven't really started any negotiations yet, but that will be happening in due course. You know, Sal has been enjoying himself in Miami, seen a few videos going around, looks like he's having a, a, a well-deserved <laughs> well break. You know, I've got to say that um, I don't want to, again, you know, everyone takes the mickey out of me for being a fanboy, but he is great on a night out, you know, yeah. like when you got, because an athlete that doesn't really, you know, party or drink too much, when they do let their hair down, they're great company. And <laughs> he is he, he is amazing company on a night out, you know, and he's um, he's enjoying his break now with, with you know, his, his family. And next week, I think, they're going to sit down and start talking about what's next and who's next. And, and there's many options. You know, there's many options from Matchroom and DAZN. There's many options from PBC. Obviously, there's the cruiserweight option as well. Have you heard the rumors about the Jamal Charlo fight that Mike Covinger put out? Have you heard that rumor? Yeah, I, I think that's definitely an option for him. You know, certainly if you're PBC and you're putting options forward for Canelo, Charlo and Benavidez are two of those options. You know, I love the potential of him moving to 175 and trying to become undisputed up there. You know, you've got three tremendous fights in Bivol, Joe Smith and Betabiev. You know, you've also got great options at 68 still. You've got Gennady Golovkin, the trilogy. You know, you've got Charlo if he moves up, Benavidez. Um, you've got the cruiserweight option as well. Do you know that it's just going to come down to Eddie Reynoso, really, and Saul in terms of what appeals to them and what gets them motivated. Mm -hmm. They've done so much in the sport. They don't really need... It's not about money for them. It's about what excites them. And it's about a plan. And I feel like they've taken care of business at 168. There's still some good fights for him there. But I think the idea of, of becoming undisputed in two weight classes, knowing Eddie and Saul is the kind of thing that might appeal to them. But ultimately, they're going to sit down and put all the options on paper and say, yeah, that one. And hopefully yeah. that one <laughs> involves us and the zone. Yeah. Yeah, if, if he becomes undisputed in two weight classes, then that legacy is untouchable. There's, I'll never have another argument about who's the best ever, ever again. But listen, I'm starting Boxing Bully Promotions, and, and I think I'm going <laughs> to sign Tony Bellew. And okay. Tony Bellew, I'm pushing, I'm pushing for Tony Bellew to, to fight Jake Paul. What do you think about that fight? Oh, I love the fight. I love the fight. I mean, that's definitely a fight that Jake Paul won't be taking. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony... You, when, when Tony goes off on one, he goes off on one. I love the interview. You know, I think that Jake Paul rubs a lot of uh, uh, people up, a lot of people up the wrong way. Mm -hmm. But I like what he's doing. You know, I, I do believe he's putting the work in. He is bringing a new audience to the sport. Why? Why shouldn't he be able to do what he's doing? Yes, he needs to fight stiff, stiffer competition. Yes, he needs to fight boxers. But at the same time, he's making great money. You know, he's making noise. He's keeping things relevant. So good luck to him. I think where boxers have a problem is when he says things like, I'm carrying boxing. Yes, that's it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that's that's offensive to fighters. But does he actually believe that? Maybe, maybe his ego's out of control. Or maybe he's just doing that to wind everybody up at the same time. I think so. You know, I think that's <laughs> could be a little doing. bit of both. So he's definitely not carrying boxing, but 
I do believe that he's, you know, at times keeping boxing relevant in some corners. And I think boxing is in a better place with him than without him. Whatever you think of him, you know, whatever, I just, I feel like, what's, what's the downside to having this guy involved right now and pushing boxing? There's no downside, down. you know, the, down. the more the merrier, the more exposure, the, the better, the more talking points, the better. But let's just all always remember what it is. You know, well, I don't, well, I don't see it as a freak show, you know, and stuff like that. I see it as a, as a, as a, a big name fighting limited opposition, but still fighting, still training, still sparring. And, you know, it's not like the guy's terrible, but he's never going to be solid boxers. But it was a nice knockout last time. Yeah. Um, and he had if Tony Bell, you know, if, if he wants to fight Tony Bell, I'll put the money up. <laughs> no, don't try and take this way. Oh, this is my fight, bro. You, you, you can put fifty percent up. I put up the rest. Yeah, I reckon if this, if the show loses money, I'll definitely be coming back to boxing bully promotion. <laughs> That's when you could be in charge. <laughs> oh, you you would definitely get no answer. But listen, Eddie, now that you're back in London, vacation is done, holiday over with. This week you're getting back to work. Hopefully next week. Uh, next time you're on with us, we'll have an announcement maybe for the Cambosas. Devin fight, maybe AJ Usyk. We're looking forward to the fights that are already scheduled, man. Eddie, as always, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks for taking the time. Welcome back home. Cheers, guys. Take Cheers. care.